Uh, when I got back to my vehicle, I got in, I drove a few blocks. Someone pointed out that I had a flat tire. I pulled over, uh, got out and looked, and I actually had two flat tires um, by then. And they had been punctured on the sidewall, meaning that they couldn't be repaired. And I had to get brand new, two new brand new tires at a cost of over $1,000 to myself. It's very disheartening because I go out there trying to you know, support something that is, I feel is completely wrong to have sexualized children and for them to um, try to normalize that is just, it's, it's, it's really sad what this world is coming to. And then having your personal property destroyed because you disagree with their beliefs. It's just not something that I want to be a part of. Andrea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and like myself, many of you were shocked to learn that there was actually a drag summer camp for kids taking place at Granville Island for children as young as seven years old at the beginning of July. Now, I had my boots on the ground in front of the carousel theater where that was taking place, and along my side was security to ensure my safety, thanks to those of you who continue to go to journalistdefensefund.com and chip in a few bucks to make sure Rebel News reporters were safe. Can we get you to I just want to get a shot here of what's happening because no, it's all part of the news. Out of the show. You don't but this right here will. is part of the news. So the there is freedom of press. He's assaulting me right now. He's touching me Nobody's with his umbrella. They shouldn't be touching me. I will after I get my shots. It's freedom. It's my right to be here, and it's the citizens who watch us right to see what's happening. report I wasn't just harassed by so-called love is love drag for kid defenders I also poked holes at the false narrative that was put forth by the theater's union Ayatsi 118 they claimed that there had been actual threats of physical violence that was made towards the theater staff and people had to come out and defend them but of course when I did some actual journalism unlike the state preferred media that just parroted these claims I showed you that the Vancouver Police Department had received zero such claims. And the only thing they could talk about in the GoFundMe that they set up, that, by the way, raised almost $20,000 to defend these claims, was about a petition, by the way, that was put on by Citizen Go and Action for Canada that raised over 17,000 signatures against the event, and emails, as though emails mean acts of violence. But... Today, I'm going to bring you the other side of the story by showing you what actually happened because I learned after that report that there was, in fact, threats to property. But of course, spoiler alert, it wasn't against those who came out to support cross-dressing events for kids. It was against those who came to peacefully oppose it. All right, so thank you both for meeting me for this important update that just shows that the, the rhetoric of hate, bigotry, uh, threats of violence, it just shows how empty that can be. And in some case, how really it should be aimed at the people who are sounding such an alarm. I want to start with you, Cindy. Now, you had organized a protest uh, outside of the Vancouver City Hall that was connected to the drag summer camp. And you have some really good numbers to share with people. So why don't you just let people know why you were gathered there that day and how much money the Carousel Theater has been getting that's also, you know, putting on these camps for kids. Well, we had targeted the theater itself, uh, and then I had heard that they were saying they had threats of violence for their property and to people that were there. They called out their IATSE and their QP. There was going to be a lot of people there. So we decided to kind of move away from that and look at the sponsors. 
a lot of the sponsors weren't local. However, the Vancouver City Hall Cultural Services was a direct sponsor. Uh, Justin Trudeau actually, since 2018, has put in almost $281,000 into this theater. And then I went in to search Government of Canada grants and contributions. And three days before we did this, on July 1st, 2023, he actually gave the theater $70,000. One of the claims was there was threats of actual violence, physical violence, and a threat to property. And then that meant that there was a GoFundMe that raised over $18,000 for security against little old you and and a few other protesters. Little old grandma. <laughs> well, I didn't mean old, but I just mean like you're not intimidating in that way. Um, and you're also part of the LGBTQ community. But in the end, it was actually your property and one other person's property that got vandalized. So tell us what happened when you got back to your vehicle. Uh, when I got back to my vehicle, I got in, I drove a few blocks. Someone pointed out that I had a flat tire. I pulled over, uh, got out and looked, and I actually had two flat tires um, by then. And they had been punctured on the sidewall, meaning that they couldn't be repaired. And I had to get brand new, two new brand new tires at a cost of over $1,000 to myself. Um, I had parked three blocks away. I had a Canadian flag on my car. I don't know how they, someone must have saw me get out of my car with my signs and I was targeted. And, and they hit your sidewall, which as I understand means it's way more costly to oh, repair. Yeah. yeah, you have to replace it. You can't repair a sidewall. Right. And as I mentioned, it wasn't just Tammy that had this happen. I'm just going to cut to another one of the very few protesters who were there in front of the theater to hear what happened when she got back to her vehicle. When I left the protest, which we did so on our own accord, nobody made us leave. I got to my car and um, didn't notice my tire to begin with, but I was leaving the protest and the security guard on the street flagged me and said, hey, your tire is low. And I said, okay, I'll uh, stop and check that. So I made a wrong turn and I ended up going back into in front of the protest and by that time the tire was completely flat and they had all been laughing at me as I drove by and I found that was very very hurtful and disrespectful because knowing that after the fact that they did this intentionally for somebody who disagrees with them is very saddening to hear that this is what society's come to um it's very disheartening because I go out there trying to, you know, support something that is, I feel is completely wrong to have sexualized children and for them to um, try to normalize that is just, it's, it's, it's really sad what this world is coming to. And then having your personal property destroyed because you disagree with their beliefs. It's just, not something that I want to be a part of, you know, like, and then I did intend to go down to another protest in Vancouver, but I couldn't because my day was hindered by the fact that I had to stop and get a new tire, which cost about 220 roughly out of my own pocket, um, which the police did respond to my complaints and they told me to go through ICBC. Well, I can't go through ICBC because the deductible is more than what the tire had cost. So it's strictly out of pocket. Nothing I can do about it because nobody is responding to our emails or our phone calls for compensation. Which is, it's, it's unbelievable how they can just, you know, damage people's personal property on merit of you know, they were calling you Nazi, they were um, screaming and yelling obscenities at people, the the blockade that that um, they created when they saw anybody talking to us was just so negative in having an open discussion with somebody that is, you know, like, we want to, we want to, you know, seek to understand and find out why they're doing what they're doing or why there would be in support of a children's drag camp 
and 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 there's no middle ground on helping understand what what uh, common ground that we can come to resolve any of this. Both you and Lisa were not even parked side by side. Um, what did the Vancouver police have to say about this? There were so many. Also, in addition to the, the 18,000 security, which I certainly don't think all of that money went to, there were so many police there. Did they take any action against the actual crime that took place that day? Uh, I phoned in a police report. I have a file number. Um, I was told to go look for video myself. Um, a friend of mine who was traveling with me that day took the file number and went back down around the theater. She found a few of the police officers there. One of them did take the file number and rode off on his bike. So we thought they were going to go look for some cameras that maybe they could spot the person who did this. And nothing ever came of it. Um, I called the VPD and checked up on my file number after that. And um, nothing's been done. They haven't found any video. I called around Granville Island to see if um, the community center or that had any video. And they told me they didn't have any cameras anywhere. <laughs> now, if you haven't been to Granville Island, you don't know, but there are businesses everywhere. Mm -hmm. Plus, there are different security lots. There's security guards walking around those lots. It's very hard to believe. And I, of course, reached out to the Vancouver police to hear, uh, to ask them, did you request for any security footage? And they never even responded to answer that question. They did respond to say that the investigation into your matter is closed so no justice seems like it's going to come from the aid of the vancouver police what measures are you still taking if any to try to be reimbursed well i called the businesses that i parked near and they did tell me to call the granville island area for cameras and again they said they didn't have any um, on july 9th they put together an informative email and i sent it to carousel theater and yahtzee so Yahtzee Executive Board and the Carousel Theatre uh, Board, all of them, I've um, followed up four times since then. I've also included the National Union of Yahtzee now, um, and I've had no response from anyone in the union regarding any responsibility, considering that they called for all those people to show up there. Well, unlike the state preferred media that was there parroting that there were threats against the camp and staff at the theater, we're here at Rebel News to bring you the other side of the story, which those threats were carried out against the peaceful protesters. So it may seem again, that's alleged, but thanks for being on Rebel News today. Thank you. Thanks, Drea. Now, of course, I did reach out to the union as well as the theater and surprise, surprise, I did not hear back. But make sure you're familiar with our special website called StopClassroomGrooming.com. That's where this report and many like it end up. But it's also where I have another report coming soon, which just like this will prove the lies that have been pitted against those who simply want to raise the discussion about whether or not these types of events are appropriate for kids. Again, that's stopclassroomgrooming.com. Go there to keep informed and share with others reports like this, but you can also chip in a few bucks to help keep our journalism on this important issue going strong. Go to stopclassroomgrooming.com.